Hi guys, this is Marvin from shopsadapage.com and today we're finally taking a look at the much anticipated keyboard from Rack Gears, the Lamang Mechanical Keyboard. For my beloved international viewers, Rack Gears is a local brand here in the Philippines that produces budget but good quality gaming peripherals and they're actually been around for quite a while now. So this video will mainly be for us Filipinos but for sure you'll still get a thing or two about mechanical keyboards as I usually add a lot more details to our videos. So feel free to watch along. Now this keyboard, as with any product from Rack Gears, has a little bit of touch of Philippine history, dialect, and things related to our culture. The name Lam Ang, if I'm not mistaken, came from the epic poem Biag ni Lam Ang, which means the life of Lam Ang. I think this is by far the best keyboard Rack has to offer and I will show you why now. So let's get into it. So right here we have the packaging for the Rack Lam Ang Pro Universal Socket Mechanical Keyboard. The Rack Lam Ang will actually be available in three versions, the light with Otemo switches, this pro version with universal socket and the pro BB or bare bones. So we have true RGB illumination, USB pass through, Bluetooth 3.0, multiple OS compatibility and built in 2000 mAh battery and as you can see, this pro version also comes with three different color top cover for further customization. At the side of the box, we have the same model name here and a rock logo right here. And then at the back, we have the main specifications right here on the left side and more features here. So as you can see, this keyboard really has a lot to offer. The Pro version will be available in two variant of switches, the Kale Box White and the Kale Bronze Speed, which is a little weird since they did not include a linear switch option. Now, this keyboard has Kale Universal Socket, so as long as the switch is plate mount type, it will be compatible with this board. This is actually the first time that Rack Gears pulled this off as their previous hot swappable keyboard only supports Otemo switches. Flipping it on its side, we can see that what we have here is the Kale Bronze Speed version and as I said, Killbox White and Barebone option will also be available. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the details around the box, so let's see what comes in the package. Alright, so inside the box, we have a couple of additional top covers in different colors. We actually have three of them, but one is already attached to the keyboard. So we have a white top cover right here and gunmetal colored one. Inside the box, you also have a user guide which is applicable for both the Pro and Pro BB version. Pretty simple instruction guide and it should be easy to understand. We also have a set of black keycaps right here that obviously is unattached to the keyboard which makes sense so that you can choose what top cover you want to use first before installing the keycaps. And finally, we have the rack lamp and keyboard itself protected by the usual foam sleeve. Of course, we also have a braided USB Type-C cable that is gold plated. By the way, I was told that this is not the final retail version but the only missing accessories are the keycap and the switch puller. Now, let's take a closer look at the rack lamp and pro mechanical keyboard. As you can see, out of the box, it is bare naked without the keycaps. It is quite heavy with a weight of around 852 grams including the keycaps but it does flex a bit which is expected due to its interchangeable design with a slim top cover. Right here, we have the much anticipated volume wheel and a couple of additional buttons that we will discuss later. At the back side, we have the USB Type-C port in a rather unusual location and a USB pass-through that I really appreciate. On the other side, it is just plain without any logo. Now flipping it on its side, we can see that this keyboard is quite slim with both the removable top cover and the bottom housing. It has this small inclination with the flip out stand for that ergonomic design as well. At the back of the keyboard, we have 4 rubber feet and 2 stands for height adjustment that fortunately also has a rubber tip. And then we have the Rack Lamp Ang Pro logo at the center and the usual technical information here up top with a very subtle Bluetooth switch. Now back in front, as I've mentioned earlier, the black top cover is already pre-installed. Removing it requires unscrewing these screws right here, which is pretty easy. Just make sure you keep the screws in one place so you won't lose them. One thing that I've noticed with these top covers is that some of the screw holes are a little too thin, so make sure you screw it back gently without over tightening them. Now once you've finally removed all the screws, you can remove the top cover by gently popping out the clips on each side. It is pretty easy to remove but since the top cover is a little too thin, you need to be more careful while removing it. And that's as far as you should go when it comes to removing screws. You're not allowed to remove the two screws here at the center as it will definitely void your warranty. Now for the purpose of this video before we replace the top cover, let's tear this keyboard down so that we can check its overall construction. So the USB pass-through has this plastic that protects it and at the same time helps with the illumination which I will show you later. At the back of the board, we have a foam protection that separates the board to the bottom housing and then we have the 2000 mAh battery right here. The bottom housing is pretty bare, not much construction support but that's to be expected for a budget keyboard. For the board itself, as you can see, it is pretty decent. 
I don't have much knowledge about electronics but this one looks pretty okay to me. Clean soldering for the most part and we can clearly see the kill hot swap sockets. I assume this is the onboard chip that controls this board. Pretty interesting stuff for my first keyboard teardown. And lastly before I forgot, the size of the plate is around 1.2mm. Going back to the customization options, once you're able to remove the top cover, make sure you also remove these buttons and transfer it to the other top cover. I think they should have included these buttons on each top cover to prevent this hassle. I'm pretty sure it's not that expensive. Customizing the Rock Lamang Pro is the sky's the limit. Aside from the three available top covers, you can also replace the keycaps to anything that you want. You can even paint the top cover if you don't like the default colors. It should be pretty easy. Now in terms of the layout, as you can see it is a 10 keyless keyboard, so we only have the arrow keys and the complete nav cluster as well as the function rows up top but we don't have the numpad here. This keyboard uses the ANSI standard layout and as we've seen earlier, looking for replacement keycaps is pretty easy. Overall, the design is pretty decent and not the typical gamery looking keyboard. Up top here, we have two LED indicator for charging in caps lock and then on this side, we have the volume wheel that also doubles as the LED brightness control wheel. And then the windows lock button here that I find redundant since we already have the usual FN plus windows key for that. In terms of the font used for the standard keycaps that came with the package, it is decent and it is the same font used by most budget keycaps that I've tried before. It is not labeled on the keycaps but we also have the multimedia keys here up top that you can toggle by pressing FN plus the function keys. Now as usual, let me turn off the light so that we can check the lighting effects. This keyboard actually has a lot but it's kinda complicated to memorize compared to most keyboards. As you can see, the brightness of the LEDs is not that bright. Later, we'll take a closer look on that. You can adjust the brightness by pressing FN plus down or up arrow keys and then to adjust the speed of the animation, you just have to press FN plus minus or plus keys. To change the direction of the animation, press FN plus left arrow key and to change the color, just press FN plus right arrow key and then you can choose among the 8 available static colors. As per my count, this keyboard has 18 different lighting modes that you can toggle by pressing the combination of FN plus the keys on the nav cluster with 3 effects on each key. Aside from the lighting effects, you also have the game mode that you can toggle by pressing FN plus 1 to 3. So we have a preset for FPS with the WASD and arrow keys, and then for League of Legends with these keys. And lastly, we have the 37 alpha and arrow keys preset. Like other keyboards, you can also record your own lighting effects. Just press FN plus the tilde key to start recording, indicated by the LED here up top. And once you're done, just press FN plus tilde key again and you'll have your own preset. Now for the additional controls here at the right side, we have the windows key lock and then we have the button to toggle the functionality of the wheel between LED brightness control and volume level control. I was actually surprised by how frequently I use the volume wheel on a day to day basis. Like for example, while I'm working and someone wants to talk to me, I can simply adjust the volume on the fly. And it also helps that it has notches for precise adjustments. This is certainly in my opinion a good additional feature and not just a worthless gimmick. Another nice touch for this keyboard is that the USB pass-through has elimination and that you can change it to static, breathing, and off. Now, let's take a closer look at the LEDs on this keyboard. Like most keyboards, this one uses SMD LEDs or surface-mounted LEDs which are not that bright but are still capable of up to 16.8 million colors and smooth transition making this a true RGB keyboard. Since the LEDs are surface mounted, it just passes through the hole on the switches, making it not as bright as keyboards with top mounted LEDs. But at the end of the day, this makes the hot swappable feature possible and I'd rather have that than bright illumination. 
Speaking of at swappable, since this keyboard uses scale universal socket, you can pretty much use any switch that you want as long as it is plate mount type or the ones that have 3 pins instead of 5. This makes it appealing to enthusiasts because of the amount of customization you can do with this keyboard. Moving on, let's discuss the Bluetooth connectivity of this keyboard. You can turn the Bluetooth on using the switch at the back of the keyboard and then press F and press Tab to change the wireless mode and this is actually a very important step. And if ever you can enter the pairing mode, just press F and press Tab again. So to enter pairing mode, just press F and press P for 3 to 5 seconds until it blinks, indicating that it is now ready to pair. Turn on Bluetooth on your other device, give it a few seconds, pair it and you're good to go. And the P will stop flashing. You can connect up to 3 devices and you can switch between them by pressing F and plus Q, W or E. As mentioned on the box, this is compatible with both Windows and Mac OS. And to switch between them, you just have to press F and plus A for Windows and F and plus S for Mac OS. As I've also mentioned earlier, the Windows key lock in my opinion is redundant since we can already toggle that by pressing F and plus Windows key. But hey, it's a bonus and I'm not complaining. Though if I am rock gears, I would rather use this button for something else. Now with regards to the USB pass-through, this is also one of the many additional features of this keyboard that I really appreciate. It does work quite well for low power devices such as flash drives and you can even use it to connect your phone to your PC and transfer files and technically charge it at the same time. I tried an external hard disk and as expected, it wasn't able to provide enough power. And obviously, it will not work in wireless mode. Alright guys, finally, we'll now move on to the switches. This keyboard, as also mentioned on the box, has scale bronze speed switches, which is clicky and requires 50 grams of actuation force, but with reduced actuation and travel distance to compare with Cherry MX Speed Silver Switch. This switch, unlike any other clicky switch that uses click jacket, has instead a click bar that produces a higher pitch click sound. Interestingly enough, it also doesn't have a tactile bump on the stem, but since it has a click mechanism, you still feel a tactile feedback. I also noticed that the Cherry MX Blues click is only when being pressed while the Kale Brown Speed clicks on both press and release. It is definitely a different experience compared to most clicky switch that I've tried before. With that said, it is good for gamers who like shorter actuation point but still prefer a clicky feel which also makes it ideal for typing. Now for the included keycaps, this keyboard uses ABS keycaps with laser etched fonts. It is double shot which means it has a separate material injected inside it for the legends and it will not fade away over time. But since it is ABS plastic, it will eventually inhibit shine after a period of time. The thickness is around 0.9mm since the double shot material doesn't span across the entire keycap. When it comes to the stabilizers, it is surprisingly decent. There's just a bit of rattle but I've seen worse from previous keyboards of rack years and this is a good sign with the Rack Lamp Pro. It seems to have a touch of factory lube as well but not as generous as other keyboards that I've tried before. Alright guys, finally, we're now going to do the mandatory typing test so that you can have an idea how the Kale Brand Speed switches sound. And as usual, here's a quick size comparison between the three most popular form factors of a keyboard. The full size, the 10 keyless with the Rock Lam Ang Pro, and the 60% form factor. Now, let's move on to the performance of this keyboard. I was actually surprised because the NKRO, or the feature that allows you to press multiple keys at the same time without any conflicts, worked flawlessly in Bluetooth mode with at least 10 keys being pressed at the same time without any issue. And of course, it also works in wired mode. This is a good sign which means you'll have no problem using it for fast typing in both wired and wireless mode. Speaking of Bluetooth mode, another surprise for me is that it doesn't have any perceivable input lag even if it is only Bluetooth 3.0 as per specifications. I didn't encounter any delay in both typing and gaming throughout the duration of my testing. Battery life is also outstanding and as per my real world testing, a single full charge lasted for a whopping 31 hours with LEDs turned on. But this is also with the power saving mode kicking in from time to time when I am away from the keyboard for 5 minutes as I usually use a keyboard on a day to day basis. And for me that is pretty awesome. With the same type of test, the Moto Speed CK62 and Royal Clutch RK71 only lasted for about 24 hours and 19.5 hours respectively. 
Now, when it comes to the typing experience, the Kale Brown Speed will definitely give you a different experience with its linear stem and double high pitch click sound, especially if you're coming from the usual Otemu and Gateron budget switches. Overall, I don't really have major complaints about it except for the fact that I don't personally like clicky switches. So again, it will just boil down to your own personal preference. So if you like a faster clicky switch without a tactile bump, then this keyboard with Kale Brown Speed switches should fit your needs. When it comes to gaming, the Kale Speed Bronze feels really responsive and quick, and in the heat of the battle, I really don't think much about the click of the switches, especially that I am wearing a headset. Although I would still prefer tactile or linear switch for gaming. The shorter actuation point partnered with the middle ground 50 grams actuation force really helps with the snappy movements compared to if I am using a keyboard with a normal blue switch. Overall, the kill speed bronze is quite decent. Alright guys, I know it's a lot to take in for a keyboard review but we're almost done. I just want to give you all the details that I can possibly provide. With that said, let's talk about the software. So right here, we have the rack fine tuner for the Lamang Universal Socket Mechanical Keyboard. We have our profiles here, and then we have four tabs here with the Customize, Lighting, Gaming Mode, and Macro. We also have the settings here wherein you can change the color of the fonts to any color that you want, set the language, and reset the keyboard to factory settings using this button right here. In the Customize tab, you can pretty much change any keys here to a different function like to another key, mouse function, and then you can also bind a key to your macros. So if you go to the macro tab here, you can create your own macro, record, and then bind that to a key that you want. You also have the option to rebind a key to a key combination, which is pretty useful at times if you're really really lazy or you just want to streamline your workflow. You can also launch a program or a URL using any key, which is also pretty cool. And you can also change a keys function to a multimedia key and some known Windows shortcuts. And lastly, of course, you can also choose to disable a particular key. Unfortunately, as I've expected way before I got this keyboard, that the volume wheel and the two additional buttons beside it is not customizable or remappable to any other function, which is a bummer but it is what it is. Now for the lighting tab, you have all the lighting effects that I've shown you earlier, and what's good about this is that the changes you make takes effect immediately on the keyboard. You can also adjust the colors, direction, speed, and brightness of the lighting effects directly using the software, and I think it is much better to do it this way rather than tinker around the keyboard as I showed you earlier. In addition, you also have the option to make your own lighting effects here with the user-defined option. In Game Mode tab, you have the option to disable these key combinations as well as the Windows key so that your gaming session won't be unintentionally interrupted. And lastly, as per my testing, the user-defined settings are being stored on the onboard memory, so even without the software, we still have our customized settings. All in all, the software is quite simple, intuitive, and works properly as intended. I just hope that the volume wheel and the two additional buttons are customizable. By the way, as you've seen on the intro, customizing the Rock Lamp Ang Pro is sky's the limit. You can change top covers, replace keycaps, and you can even get a customized free stress like what I have here. As you can see, everything looks different from the stock Lamp Ang, which makes this keyboard really appealing to enthusiasts like myself. Alright guys, so to conclude, in my humble opinion, the Rock Lamp Ang Pro lived up to its hype and I feel like it is by far the best keyboard Rock Gears has produced. I mean, what more can you ask for? It works in both wired and wireless mode, it is USB Type-C with an additional USB pass-through, it has dedicated wheel for volume and LED brightness, the top cover is interchangeable with additional two top covers out of the box, and this keyboard has universal socket which streams for customizability and longevity. As long as you take good care of the board itself, this keyboard will last for a long time as you can just easily swap the switches out. Battery life is also outstanding at 31 hours of normal use and there's basically no input lag for the Bluetooth connectivity. I am actually hard pressed to think of flaws for this keyboard but if I have to, it would be with the build quality. It is not as solid as I would prefer with a little flex on the body and the screw holes of the top cover being too thin. It is also quite disappointing that the volume wheel and additional buttons are not customizable. I am also quite confused that they did not include a linear or tactile option with this pro version. It is only available with kale clicky switches. Other than that, depending on the price when this is released, it is an outstanding keyboard and is very easy to recommend to anyone. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to check the full article link below. Huge thanks to Rock Gears for allowing me to review this keyboard. You can get this once it is released on their official website and partner stores link below. Thanks as well to Sir Cholo of Travelas Arts for this awesome custom wristrest. I'll also put the link below if you're interested to get one of these. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day.